Each week, we take a moment to sit down and talk about things going on at the road in what we call the road detour. So, uh, how much coffee you drink a day, man? Honestly, yeah. Six cups. Maybe eight. That's more than I thought. Maybe eight. I'll drink. This is my first cup. Most days, I don't even drink a cup. And it's got, it's it's a candy bar in a cup. Yeah. I got a lot of uh, creamer in it. And I'll drink about that half a cup, and that's about it for me. Man, if I drink more than that, you couldn't stand to be around me. Really? Oh, I'd be you bouncing off a wall. I take... Normally in the morning, I will take some level of multivitamin with something to give me some. Matter of fact, today I drank a Celsius and I've had five cups of coffee. Already today. When do you quit? When do you quit your coffee? What time of day? Quitters are for losers, man. You drink it all the way up to bedtime, man? I quit. I win at everything, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Do you drink it all the way up to bedtime, man? I mean, I feel like I'm putting on the spot here in front of everybody. I, I, no. I drink a lot of coffee. I just didn't know if you had no, like, I, I don't. can't drink like, it after five. If I drink it too late, it's, it's kind of at the point where if I keep drinking, then I will have a hard time going to sleep tonight. Abe drank a ton of coffee. Did he? Yeah. I mean, I a ton. It. A ton of coffee. The caffeine will... And ener- he drink energy drinks all the time too. So like, this is what's crazy for me. I, if, I will, if I continue to drink coffee... I don't get hungry. I could drink coffee yeah. all day long and never eat and feel fully satisfied. So, uh, yeah, caffeine, I guess, is suppressing appetite. I, you know, I'm dra- I was dragging a little bit <laughs> when we started coming in here and picked up this cup of coffee. Yeah. I thought, I'll sit here and sip on this coffee. Do you have a certain kind of coffee you like? No, you know what? Some people can taste the difference in coffee. Um, I cannot. So, like, I can do cheap coffee or expensive coffee and it is and I drink my coffee plain so I don't doctor it up but yeah. so like but I cannot I know if it's bitter on the back end right but you if it's not bitter then I'm it's a great coffee to me you ever do french press you had french press no dude that sounds expensive no it's a way you make it oh. I'm, I'm gonna bring my french press up here and make it you talking about bitter on the back end you, huh. it'll change your coffee life by the way here's for you guys <laughs> You guys got a brand of coffee we need to try. We need to hear it. Put it in the comments. She got a yeah. way of making coffee. Elijah uses that little tiny percolator pot mm-hmm. from Louisiana. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that's called, but it's tiny. And uh, and yeah. he's got a certain kind of coffee he likes. He's got, well, his is a instant coffee. No, no, no. It's not because you don't percolate an instant coffee. The, it's he's from got Louisiana. A, so the, the thing that he's got, I saw something in his office the other day. We also have it. It's for... Uh, some of our missionary friends that was like in Nicaragua or something uh-huh. found this, like, it's like the best. And I forget about it until I see his. And then I'll remember, I need to go home and try, like fix some in my house. But it's like, it's in, it's in a yellow can. Have you seen it? Uh-uh. No. Elijah likes that, that strong stuff too, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can't. I don't, I'd normally drink light coffee. However, I will say this, that if my stomach starts bothering me, because uh, light coffee has more acid in it. Mm-hmm. So if you will drink darker roast coffee, it won't bother you. It won't, it won't hurt your stomach. That might, that might help me out a little bit. So my kids are coffee snobs. Some of them are. And they have mm-hmm. to have a certain, you know, bean grown in a certain part of the world. And uh, water, <laughs> water not, I'm not joking, at a certain temperature. And, yeah, no. and a lot of that, I can't tell much difference. I could tell a difference in the French press. It, it takes the bitter edge off the bean. I'll bring it up here. We'll make some. It's yeah, no, I love that. I mean, again, I, lo- I drink a lot of coffee. I just like to... I guess I've uh, acquired the taste for it. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't always think it's incredible, but I like it. Yeah. And so, sometimes this this half a cup I drink is really good. My kids, Lois, she would she would amputate an arm or two or three if she could get some coffee. <laughs> she she is constantly begging for us to let her have coffee, and we're like, no, you're 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 too much already. So like, we need to keep you. <laughs> That's a great segue into what we're talking about today. Mm-hmm. Parenting. <laughs> yeah, we're starting our series uh, actually tomorrow night, uh, Wednesday night, worship on Wednesday, and uh, this is going to kick off for the next four weeks of uh, a series called Arrows, and we're talking about parenting, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, we don't have a plan when we come in here. We say that every week, so we're just kind of shooting from the hip, but yeah. the theme of warrior and, and the arrow and, you know, of all the things that God could have used to communicate wow. about parenting, why do, why do you think he used warrior, brother? Because it's a fight. It is. It's a fight. And it's tough. Yeah. Right? Be, being a warrior is not easy. No. Uh, and you give up a lot to be a warrior. 
Yeah. You know, I think that's one of the things I was thinking about this, you know, before we came in, I knew we were talking and, you know, I know you're going to talk about a little bit in your message, but again, the first step is you have to be a warrior and, or equally, you have to be willing to fight for something. And in this, you got to be willing to fight for your kid. Right. And there's so much stuff that happens in our, in our country and this, in our world. And how are we fighting for, to, to help maintain our children's innocence? How are, mm-hmm. we, ch- how are we fighting to keep and push back the, the powers of evil from our kids? How are we setting our kids up to succeed in this crazy, sinful, evil world? And if you don't fight, you're going to lose. Yeah, and, and, and I'm, I, I'll, I'll just be honest with you. Uh, I shared this in staff meeting. I'm a little overwhelmed mm-hmm. yeah. uh, with where our culture is, uh, you know, I've always tried to be the guy as a pastor who was for something and not against everything. Hmm. Uh, you know, be for hmm. life, not yeah. just against abortion. Be for life. And that changes your perspective because then you're involved in the lives of right. of, of children right. that maybe somebody was having a trouble raising or mm-hmm. whatever. But, uh, man, to look at our world and, and see what's happening with our kids in schools and uh, media, culture in general, it is a war for our our children and trying to raise a child that pursues God as a priority, it's just getting really difficult. Yeah, you know, that's really good what you just said, because one of the things that that I'm consistently reminded of and have been reminded of even more now that we're preparing for this message series is that our goal as parents shouldn't be behavior modification, right? It should be about the spiritual condition of our, right. of our kids' hearts. And so when we're looking at how do we help our kids, how do we fight for our kids, it's sometimes I really want to fight my kid, right? You're right. Not right. fight but for them, right, but fight, right, right, right. fight with them, right. yes. And so, but it, but I have to be careful because me just changing their behavior is not winning. Yeah. And, and I can change their behavior and they still be influenced by demonic culture. Right. And I'll lose. Well, so so it's like submission. As, as a parent, you can make your kids do certain things, but you don't win their heart, right? right? And if right. they don't want to do it from their heart, it's not a long-term solution. They're, they're not going to be that long-term. Right. They'll do it to keep from getting in trouble. They'll do it to get a privilege, but the rebellion yeah. is still in the heart. Yeah, yeah. So how about this? So how do we set our lives up, our homes up, our families up, so that we are in the best position to release our kids— when the time comes. When the time comes to make the right ongoing decisions that we won't be there to make anymore. Well, that's right. what we're going to talk about. That's it. And it's tough. I, you know, I, I've got a different perspective. My kids are grown. You're, you're still a parent. You're still <laughs> intimately involved in that. But you also, you become a grandparent. Yeah. And, and you've seen mm-hmm. me with uh, specifically one of my grandsons who, who hangs out with us a lot. And mm-hmm. uh, he's old enough to do a few things mm-hmm. with us. Uh, the influence and the opportunity there is huge as a grandparent. So it doesn't matter if you're a parent, grandparent, step parent. Um, if you're anybody involved in the life of a child, there's going to be something for you in in this series. Well, yeah, you know, again, we're talking about you have to be a warrior, right? And and in that, a warrior specifically as it relates to arrows. That means we are consistently working to show how to shoot our bow, if you will. Mm-hmm. And that means that there's some things that we can do to not only position ourselves to be the warrior that God's intended us to be. But there's some things that we can do to set up not only our biological kids, but the kids that we're leading in life to propel them into a greater future. This is, this is from the sermon this week, but um, it just, Tell me. yeah, it works. You know, you, you get excited about it. Why, why, why a bow and arrow of all the weapons? Yeah. Right. I mean, you have swords, you have all these things, but here it is. And I, this is just, this is huge to an older guy. And that is the arrow is the only thing that's reach is further than the warrior. Yeah. Um, mm. Is that it's it's further in time, it's further in impact, it's it it extends the reach of the warrior, and that's what you're doing with your kids, yeah. man. It's going to go further than you. That's real. That's good. Our kids are what God has given us to reach into a generation that we don't have access. We won't even live right in. Yeah. Ah, that's really hey, good. Hey, we're excited about <laughs> this. Uh, we are. We're excited about it. Uh, call somebody. Bring somebody with you. If you got an unchurched friend, here's the deal. If you're a parent, these principles are just truth. They are simply truth. And if they're wanting to influence their kids, this is a great time yeah. to introduce somebody to the church. Hey, let me before we go because I want to ask: mm-hmm. bow and arrow or crossbow? Currently in my life, yeah. crossbow. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually going to. 
talk about what we talked about. Yeah. <laughs> you are? Yeah. 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 I am. I wrote That's it. That's going to come I, up in a sermon. This yeah, is, really... is uh, the difference. And <laughs> hey, one is decidedly easier than the other. Which, hey, if you were going to shoot, would you shoot a bow and arrow or crossbow? Yeah. Put it, put that in the, yeah. I want to know. Answer the question. And, and, and here's the deal. Uh, yeah. It's just a lot easier to do the crossbow. And, and, and the bottom line is a lot of us crossbow parent. Wow. Now we don't want to do the work. And uh, we take we try to find the easier way. And we're getting the oohs and the ahs in the room here right now. Because it's true. I bought a crossbow this year. Because I don't want to take the time and do the work. Yeah. You know, dang I've got you, I've you. got uh, two of my sons. Cut this part out. Can we cut this part out? <laughs> oh, it's okay. What? Huh? Why do you want to cut Just- that? Stepping on my toes. I'm about to. No, 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 no. Two of my sons, one of my sons has a compound bow and he's eating up with it. Yeah. And the thought of him doing a, a, a compound or a crossbow. Yeah. But, but then I got my son who just got started and he's doing a recurve, which I think wow. is the most insane thing ever. You got to be with it. You got to be yeah. able to reach out and almost no. feed a deer to kill it with a recurve, you know? <laughs> yeah, tickle come it. In. Yeah. Come, on, come over here and eat this apple on my hand. Well, Stab you with this arrow. Anyway, we've diversed and digressed into a hunting thing. Yeah, but no. uh, but hey, look, we're t- yeah, go ahead. We're excited. Yeah, I'm fired up. I'm excited. You know, again, I'm a parent. I'm learning how to parent. And I have learned so much, not only from watching you, but but from this series that I'm preparing for already. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited for our people. I'm so excited for my family to be able to hear how we can grow and progress as parents. Yeah. And believe me, I've, uh, I share a lot from the things I didn't do right, which is uh, true of all of our lives, mm. is that we look at our life and go, man, I wish I'd have done that different. Be a part of this. Yeah. Uh, starting on Wednesday night, worship on Wednesday, uh, first Sunday, October 1st, be here with us and let's, uh, let, let's try to do better together. It's going to be great. I'm so excited. See you guys there. All right. All right.